has it in the gun. Throwing into the end zone, wide open, an easy touchdown for Central Michigan as Ben McCord hauls it in for the Chippewas, and he was wide open. Central Michigan defeated Kent State 27-14 for their 12th straight win against a Mac East opponent on Wednesday. We have the highlights of CMU's victory coming up next on Chippewa Rewind. Make this one count tonight. Let's play faster, harder, and longer than them. Let's go get this win number six, all right? Let's go. What a win for Central Michigan in their final road game of the 2015 season. Thanks for joining us on Chippewa Rewind, presented by the Morning Sun. I'm Adam Jackson, alongside your head coach, John Bonamigo. 27 to 14 was the final on a cold, windy night in Kent. What did you think of your team's performance? Well, I'm really pleased with how we started the game. Came out fast. We were able to move down, take a quick lead. Uh, had a little bit of lull there in the second quarter. Had to get the ship righted during halftime and uh, came out and really had an impressive second half, being able to move the ball and really shutting down that Kent offense. Uh, held them, I think, 51 yards in the second half. Uh, kicking game was solid throughout. It was a, a very good game all the way around, and we're pleased to get the victory. 51 yards in that second half for Kent State. They only had one first down as well, so the defense really stepped up. And for you, it's your sixth win of the season. You're now bowl eligible. That's got to feel good. It does, but, you know, that's just a number right now. That means we have six wins. That means we're bowl eligible. As I told the team yesterday morning, that doesn't guarantee us anything. We have an important game coming up this week on Friday. Uh, it's, a, it's a MAC game. It's an in-state rivalry game. It's the last home game for our, our seniors, uh, and it's a, a chance for us to get to seven wins, which would really solidify our bowl status and, and get us into a good bowl. Now for you, on a personal level, on Friday, you received some great news. For, for people that don't know, you had to battle uh, tonsil cancer throughout the summer, and you were cleared on Friday. How great yeah, of a feeling was that? It's a, it's a tremendous feeling. Uh, I want to thank everybody for uh, in the Central Michigan community and you know that really the CMU nation for all of their prayers and support uh, really meant a lot to myself personally and also to Paulette our whole family um, yeah Friday was a, a busy day um, Paulette and I drove down to Ann Arbor and went through a, a very long battery of different tests and that sort of thing and then uh, weren't sure when we were going to get the call on the results um, Got the call 7 p.m. on Friday night, and uh, we're cancer-free, and we're very happy, and um, we're very grateful. Well, Coach, one final time, we're very proud of you and uh, happy you were able to uh, defeat cancer. Thanks, Adam, and hope to be here for a very long time. All right, well, let's jump into the highlights. We start with defense. You guys go on the first drive, get a field goal. It's 3 to nothing. Terrific play by Josh Cox on it's the outside. It's a great job here. Really, we have leverage on the ball inside and out. Josh gets there first. Great wrap tackle. Uh, very physical play. It's good to get it stopped for a zero game. Kent State ends up punting the football, and Corey Willis had a big game, this one for 35. It's statistically his best game of his career, his young career. Uh, we've been kind of waiting for that. He's shown a lot of flashes. Here he is on a skinny post going up and high pointing the ball. Uh, comes down with the catch, and again, he had just had a great day. Very proud of Corey, and uh, not just the player that he's becoming, but the young man that he is. Later on in the drive, we've got a second and 11, and Eric Cooper able to get by a tackler and get up the field. Yeah, a little crossing route there. Caught them in zone coverage. We're expecting some type of man or two, uh, or two man. Uh, you know, Cooper hits Eric, and Eric's able to turn it up and get the first down. You were driving into the wind, so you decided to take your chances and go for it on a fourth and three, and Jesse Kroll, legend yards on the day, has a big catch. Yeah, that end of the field was the windiest. Uh, that would have been a very tough field goal there. Uh, so decided to go for it. Was just hoping to get the three yards for the first down. Jesse shakes a man, uh, gets us all the way down to the one-yard line, and uh, I think in the next play, Jare gets a touchdown. Jesse ended the day with 139 yards to lead CMU, and you said it, Jare gets in for his first touchdown. It's a great job there, good push on the left side there, and uh, good surge, and Jare does a nice job of powering the ball into the end zone. 
That makes it 10 to nothing CMU. Now on the upcoming kickoff, did you plan to try and Well, we knew that over? the ball would hang up in the wind. Uh, we were really called deep right. It hung up more than we thought we would, it would. Uh, they have a hard time uh, fielding it there. It ends up a loose ball. And uh, one of our guys that's really done a great job for us all year on special teams, uh, Trevor Apsey, ends up with the uh, fumble recovery. And uh, those are huge plays in the game to you know, be able to get a takeaway in that situation and really be down in scoring position again. Uh, that was a big turning point in the game early on. So you get it at the 25 yard line now, a third and 13. And Jesse Kroll, one of his seven catches on the day, gets another. Yeah, nice job here by Jesse. Uh, Cooper has to scramble a little bit. Jesse breaks in, um, catches the ball in traffic, is able to turn up for a first down. It's a great play. Ben McCord had one catch on the day. It was for his fifth touchdown of the year. Well, that's pretty good uh, efficiency. One catch, one touchdown. Again, him on the seam route there, skinny inside the safety. Uh, Cooper does a nice job stepping up and, and delivering a nice low ball into the wind. And uh, Ben does a nice job finishing off with the touchdown. That makes it 17 to nothing. Now, Kent State was able to get a touchdown. They come back on the next drive, make it 17 to seven. We push forward to the second quarter, and Ron Caluzzi had a terrific day. Three punts inside the 20. Here's one of them. Yeah, this is a good job by him. Uh, you know, that ball got up and really carried with the wind. Their, their punt returner catches it at the 10 going backwards, and we get a, a host of guys down there to tackle him at the six-yard line. Uh, Tony Scarcelli did a great job there, overran it initially, ended up on the ground, got up off the ground and uh, was in on the tackle. It was a great hustling play by everybody on the punt team and a, and a great, great punt by Ron. Winslow Chapman, the other one that was able to get part of the tackling there on that play. Then you force another fumble as Josh Cox makes another great play and Perry falls on it. Yeah, this ball breaks outside here, uh, gets outside the defense. Good pursuit here. Uh, Josh coming off a block, falls back inside, gets a hand on the football, knocks it out. And we had probably about four guys in position there that could have recovered it and ended up being Jeff. It's a great job. We'll always uh, take those takeaways. As we said, a big day for Corey Willis. This one was for 48 yards. It's a good job here by Cooper. With the, sometimes it's, it's, it's more difficult to throw the ball even with the wind than, than into it. Uh, uh, but Corey does a nice job there with the route, gets the corner turned around, and makes a very, very good catch there over his outside shoulder uh, for a big game. He had 131 yards on the day, six more catches. You get the field goal, make it 20 to seven. They're able to get a late touchdown before the half ends. Yeah, this was, um, you know, they were able to put together a nice drive here. Uh, we, have a, we have a little bit of a breakdown in coverage here, turn someone loose there on the inside route and they're able to find them for a touchdown. So you had a 17 point lead. They were able to cut it to six. What'd you think of the first 30 minutes? Well, I thought, you know, the first 15 was really, really good. And then there was a part there with the uh, second 15 where it wasn't as good. Maybe call it a lull, whatever you want to call it. But, uh, you know, normally I talk to the team right as soon as we go into the locker room. And then again, as we leave the locker room uh, for the second half. This time I approached it a little bit differently. And I told them so. I said I wanted to hear what they had to say. Certainly seems like the leaders stepped up at halftime because Central Michigan played tremendously in the second half. We'll break that half down for you when we come back on Chippewa Rewind. Again here, to nice move Hanson by Cancelvalis right there, and he's going to go down. It's going to be a Central Michigan sack. Cancelvalis. Welcome back to Chippewa Rewind. Central Michigan up on Kent State, 20 to 14 at the half, and we start the second half with a terrific punt from Ron Caluzzi. Got it down inside the one here. Yeah, this is a great job, especially going to his left. Uh, also, need to comment the official. Uh, his positioning was perfect on that play and was able to get the ball spotted inside the one. On a day like that, with the wind, uh, field position was really, really critical, and this really was had a big impact on the early going of that third quarter. You end up getting a three and out on that possession, get the football back, and a third and four. How about this catch from Anthony Rice across the middle? Well, I mean, Anthony's had an outstanding year. I mean, this is just one more to add to his highlight reel. 
great job there going up in traffic, coming down with the catch and moving the chains. So we push forward to the next play and this is where we see once again, Corey Willis make a catch, gets all the way down to the one yard line. Yeah, Corey out on the uh, quick out there is able to turn it up and, and just narrowly misses getting the ball in the end zone. I think uh, if it was the NFL and we had 10 different camera angles, we might have been able to challenge that and get him a touchdown. But as it was, it's a big game down there to the one yard line. A couple of plays later, Jarre Hayes gets in for the second time. Yeah, we had two uh, quarterback sneaks there, come back to the left side there again. Uh, with Jare get a good push and uh, he's able to finish the drive off with the touchdown. How about this catch from Jesse Kroll? Somehow finds a way to get a foot in bounds. This was a great, uh, great placement uh, of the football by Cooper, having it where, you know, really uh, Jesse's the only person that has a shot at it. And then, you know, Jesse, as you mentioned, just does a great job of going up, high pointing the ball, and then having the uh, field presence to come down with a foot in bounds. Just a fantastic job. They get the football for one final time and you shut it down. Chris Cantavellos comes across the edge, makes a nice sack. Yeah, this was a great job by him turning the corner and then getting the, getting the foot on the quarterback and, uh, or getting to the quarterback's feet right there and, and being able to come up with the sack. So that's the final. Central Michigan wins 27 to 14. Again, you go on the road and shut the opponent out in the second half. That had to feel good. It does. Anytime you can get a shutout, whether it's for a quarter or a half or four quarters, it's a great thing. Uh, again, you know, credit to our defensive staff making the adjustment. Credit to our players going out and executing that, you know, the game plan, and uh, you know, really doing a great job in the second half of shutting down that Kent State offense. Once again, Cooper Rush goes over 300 yards. He now eclipses the 3,000 mark on the season. What can you say about your junior quarterback? Can't really say enough good things about Cooper Rush and the season he's had and how important he is to our football team and our overall success. But, you know, it's a team game. It's a team effort, group effort. You know, we had a lot of people step up. And we have all year long. So the win puts CMU at 6-5, and 5-2 five, five and two in the conference. They've got one game left in the regular season. It's against Eastern Michigan. We'll look at the Eagles when we come back on Chippewa Rewind. Hey CMU fans, experience Central Michigan University and all there is to do around campus by visiting Ticket Central, your one-stop shop for all your favorite CMU events. Ticket Central staff is ready to greet you with a smile and assist you with all your ticketing needs. Whether it be for athletic events, plays, concerts, and more, we've got you covered. For further information, you can visit the atrium of the Event Center Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. or give us a call at 888-347-347. 3872. At Ticket Central, we're here to help get you wherever you want to go. Sing that song, man. Let's sing yeah. that song. Yeah. We go. We go. We go. One, two, you know what to do. Five Central Five for victory. Five fellows We've got the final game of the season coming up. Central Michigan takes on one of their rivals here in the state. It's Eastern Michigan. You get them at home this year at Kelly Shorts. Final time to play in front of the home fans. It's this Friday. Tell us what you know about the Eagles. Well, I think in spite of the record, this is a team that's very much improved under Coach Creighton. He's done a very good job with the culture there. Uh, this is the type of game, just going even back to when I played, that Really, the records don't mean anything. I mean, this is a in-state rivalry game. It's a MAC game. Uh, for us, it's important for us to get to seven wins. It's very important that we want to send our seniors out on a on a winning note. So I fully expect that we'll get their very best effort. You know, they've had an extra week to prepare for us. I think this is the fourth or fifth opponent that we've had this this year that where that's been the case. So um, we fully expect to get their very best, and you know, I expect that we'll give them our very best as well. Coach, they've got a pretty good offense. They run two quarterbacks, and they've also got a senior running back in Darius Jackson who has over 1,000 yards, so that'll be tough to stop. Yeah, Jackson's been very impressive, and I've been impressed with both young quarterbacks, both sophomores. Uh, they're one of the uh, NCAA's most improved offenses. So, like I said, they're, they've done a great job there. Uh, it hasn't shown up in the one-loss column, but they've been very competitive. 
especially early in games. And so uh, it's going to be important that we have a great week of preparation, that we have a great plan going into this, and uh, that we're able to go out and execute on, on uh, Friday. Well, Coach, seven wins is very important. It would guarantee a, a bowl trip this season. So wish you the best of luck in the home finale. Thanks very much, and thanks to everybody who supported us all year long. Uh, we really appreciate it, and fire up chips. All right, that'll wrap up our show. Central Michigan closes out the regular season Friday afternoon against Eastern Michigan. Kickoff is at 1 o'clock in Kelly Short Stadium. Make sure you join us again next week as we break down the entire game versus EMU right here on Chippewa Rewind. For Coach John Bonamigo, I'm Adam Jackson. Have a happy Thanksgiving and fire up chips.